Christopher Marlowe, has he been to the house? Marlowe. Oh, yes, is the one. Lovely waistcoat. Shame about the poetry. That dog! Your Majesty. Stand up straight, girl. I've seen you. You are the one who comes to all the plays at Whitehall, at Richmond. Your Majesty. What do you love so much? Your Majesty. Speak up, girl. I know who I am. Do you love stories of kings and queens? Of feats of arms? Or is it courtly love? I love theatre. To have stories acted for me by a company of fellows is indeed... They're not acted for you, they are acted for me. And? And I love poetry above all. Above Lord Wessex. <laughs> My lord, when you cannot find your wife, you better look for her at the playhouse. <laughs> Playwrights teach us nothing about love. They make it pretty, they make it comical, or they make it lust. They cannot make it true. Oh, but they can. I mean, Your Majesty, they, they do not. They have not, but I believe there is one who can. My Lady Viola is young in the world, Your Majesty is wise in it. Nature and truth are the very enemies of play acting. I'll wager my fortune. I thought you were here because you had none. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one will take your wager, it seems. Fifty pounds. Fifty pounds? A very worthy sum on a very worthy question. Can a play show us the very truth and nature of love? I bear witness to the wager and will be the judge of it as occasion arises. I've seen nothing to settle it yet. Are there no more fireworks? They will be soothing after the excitements of Lady Viola's audience. <laughs> Have her then, but you're a lordly fool. She's been plucked since I saw her last and not by you. It takes a woman to know it. <laughs>